Now that the year is drawing to a close, let's take a look back, let's say 50 to 100 years, and see how much we've changed. Something tells me we've become smarter and maybe a little bit sexier. This week we're going to be looking at a couple of studies that have looked at two big differences that have happened in the past 50 to 100 years, one involving sex and the other involving intelligence, or IQ. The first study looked at sexual attitudes and behavior over the past 40 to 50 years, and they did this by analyzing data from the General Social Survey, which does a big survey of the whole United States about every year or so. And they asked a lot of questions about a lot of different topics, and some of them involve sex. Interestingly, over the past 50 years, a lot of changes have happened in terms of sexual attitudes, but not so much in terms of sexual behavior. In general, attitudes have become a lot more liberal and tolerant toward different sexual lifestyles and sexual behavior. For example, in 1972, 71% of adults surveyed believed that premarital sex was not morally acceptable. But by 2012, only 42% of those surveyed shared this opinion, and actually only 38% among millennials. Similarly, whereas only 11% of people felt that sex between two consenting adults who were of the same gender, in other words, homosexual sex, was not wrong at all in 1972, this number has now risen to 44%, and also 56% among millennials. In addition to attitudes about premarital sex and gay sex becoming more accepting, people have also become more accepting of sex between teenagers and sex between casual acquaintances, in other words, hookups. With more liberal attitudes about sex, you'd think that people in the younger generations would be having more sex with more sex partners, but surprisingly, research finds that's actually not the case. So comparing these same survey results, they found that since the boomer generation, people have had about three to four sex partners in their lifetime, and this holds true for the Gen Xers and the Millennials. A big difference was found in the early 1900s when people used to just have about one sex partner across their whole lifetime. But starting at about the 1960s, that increased between two and three, and then eventually in the 1970s, three to four sex partners in a lifetime, and then it's kind of held constant ever since. The only real difference between millennials and past generations is that they are 35% more likely to have sex with casual acquaintances. But in the end, they don't tend to have any more sex partners than their grandparents did at their age. So while people are having sex with different types of people in different types of relationships, the number of sex partners they've had remains about the same. While there hasn't been that much of a change in sexual behavior across the last 50 years, there's been some momentous changes in intelligence across the last 100 years, especially when it comes to IQ. A recent study meta-analyzed data from about 270 different studies that took place between 1909 and 2013. The results supported this old idea that people in fact are getting smarter from generation to generation. This has long been known as the Flynn effect, and it's this mysterious finding that IQ tends to rise over the years. In fact, they find that the general population tends to show an increase of about 0.3 IQ points per year. So for each generation, or span of about 20 years, the IQ in the country has gone up about 6 points. That's an astonishing increase. Consider this. People in the early 1900s showed an average difference of 35 IQ points. That's like comparing someone of average intelligence at 100 IQ to someone who's highly gifted at 135 IQ. That would be someone in the top 1% of IQ scores. In other words, only 1% of people living in 1900 had an IQ as high as the average person living today. Interestingly, they find that this trend towards higher IQs was really huge in the early 1900s and has since been slowing down. From about 1900 to 1950, we actually saw increases of about 0.7 IQ points per year. But since then, the rate of IQ increase has slowed way down. So for example, from 1982 to 2012, over the course of 30 years, the country only saw increases of about 0.2 IQ points per year. The reason why we saw such big gains in the early 1900s likely has to do with the fact that that's when America was advancing in childcare, healthcare, and nutrition. A lot of studies have found that childcare nutrition and healthcare makes a big difference on adult IQ. To understand that, let's take a step back and figure out what IQ actually is. IQ, or general intelligence, isn't really how much knowledge you know. It's really about how quickly and efficiently your brain processes information. This has a lot to do with things like, what's the thickness of your myelin and sheath on each neuron? A thicker sheet causes neurons to fire faster. 
It also has to do with how much white matter we have between brain areas. In other words, how interconnected different brain regions are. This is not something you can improve with a stimulating environment or better schooling. It really comes down to genetics. And in fact, studies show that IQ is about 90% heritable. That's even more heritable than your height. But one way you can improve people's IQ is to make sure they live up to their full potential. And one way people don't do that is if they get inadequate nutrition or health care when they're in utero or especially when they're small children. For example, even something as small as an iodine deficiency, which is usually caused by not having enough iron in your diet, can cause children to lose about 12 to 15 IQ points over their lifetime. And studies show that about 30 to 40 percent of the children all over the world not only have iodine deficiencies, but are so deficient in their nutrients that they actually show stunted growth throughout their body. This is likely having a big impact on their IQ. So when countries become wealthy enough to actually take care of their children, to feed them properly and give them proper medical health care, they're likely to see a big jump in IQ in the next generation. So while the time for big jumps in IQ is probably in the past for the United States, we're finding that countries like Kenya and China, developing nations, are seeing big jumps in their IQ currently. Another thing that's interesting about their findings is that they find that gains in IQ aren't equal across all types of intelligence. In particular, they found that the biggest gains were in something they called fluid intelligence, which is a person's ability to think quickly and solve logic problems using reasoning. Something that didn't make great gains was something called crystallized intelligence, which is basically how much knowledge you have. So this is something that you would in fact gain through schooling. In fact, over the past 30 years, people in the United States made a gain of about six to 10 IQ points in terms of fluid intelligence, but only about one to two IQ points in crystallized intelligence. This means that the children of today can in fact think quicker and use logic better than the generation of yesterday, probably because they had better nutrition and healthcare, but they're not actually smarter in terms of book learning. In other words, schools aren't doing a great job of actually increasing the knowledge of children. So given these trends, what's the next 50 to 100 years likely to look like? People are gonna likely get even more liberal and tolerant in terms of their sexual attitudes. So while we've made great strides in things like gay rights, especially recently, we still have a long way to go in terms of rights for transgender people or recognition of people who are, for example, asexual or pansexual, or otherwise just don't fit this monogamous, marriage-centric idea we have for normal sexuality, quote unquote. It's also likely that our fluid intelligence is likely to keep increasing, but it's not likely that we're gonna see gains in crystallized intelligence anytime soon. In fact, a lot of schools nowadays are kind of de-emphasizing the whole idea that children need to learn facts and figures and formulas, probably because the internet has all the information that most people need right at our fingertips. And so schools are focusing more on things like how to process information, how to prepare it, how to deal with all the information we have available to us. So it's likely that this will again help with fluid intelligence, but we might actually see declines in crystallized intelligence moving forward. Whether that's a good thing or not, I guess we'll have to wait another 100 years to find out.